Welcome back to the show. Many thanks for staying with us. Now, the Rights Information Bill is a teenager in Parliament. I say so because it is well over 18 years in Parliament and since we all have been pushing for its passage. Fact is, many other bills have been passed in haste at the expense of the RTI bill. In fact, there have been several indications it may take a while longer to be passed despite all the promises the NPP administration made uh, before they took over power. But the Media Coalition for the Right to Information Bill is not having any of that, and you shouldn't too. This afternoon, they have just received a letter from the police giving them the green light to go on a street action to share flyers. That is news, because the last time they tried to hold up placards, some of them were arrested. I have two of them in the studio with me to have a quick conversation. Elvis Dako is a member of the coalition. Elvis, you're welcome. Thank you. And also here with me in the studio is Esther Ahulu. Esther is with the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative. They're also part of the coalition. Esther, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so, so when I first saw the letter, I was wondering, because it didn't have any date, as to when the uh, uh, street action was going to happen and the de details. So take us through the date and the details of the street action. Well, the street action will happen tomorrow. Okay. And the Red Friday commences tomorrow. Okay. And the street action is taking the form of all members of the 70 civil society organizations that have come together in this battle. Mm -hmm to distribute flyers, engage people that we come across, and explain to them the benefit of this law to the ordinary Ghanaian. Mm. So we have places like Kwame Nkrumah Sekel, okay. Tudu, mm. around Tema Station. Mm. We are looking at Emmanuel Eye Clinic. Okay. We are looking at around Accra Mall. Mm -hmm. All these places, we are going Rich. there, reach, run about. Mm. We'll be there in red t-shirts, and we'll have flyers that talks about some of the benefits of the bill if okay. passed into law that will give to motorists and commuters as well and then those that will be on foot we want to engage them and explain to them why it's important for every Ghanaian mm. to support the action that members of parliament as much as possible should pass this bill into law before they rise again because the bill when it becomes law will be so beneficial to every citizen of this country. Article 21 of the 1992 Constitution says that every citizen is, has a right to information. Mm. However, the Constitution did not spell out the modalities. If you are applying for the information, what processes you should follow. If you apply for the information, how long should it take for the office to respond to you? Mm. The office itself, the officer who will provide the information, what processes and steps should that person take within the framework of the law? to provide you the uh, information legally. Mm. All these things have not been spelled out in the Constitution. Therefore, the situation we have now is if you apply for information from any public office, any officer can use his or discretion to deny you the information. Okay. And the only option you have is to go to court. Which However, is it is process. very expensive to mm. go to court in this country. We have people who have personal issues that directly affect them that they cannot even seek redress in court because of the financial constraints. So that discretion people are using to deny us information. This law is coming to remove the discretion and therefore you don't need to spend money to go to court in order to get information from a public office. So that is the essence of this particular law. It grants you that will to apply for any information from any public office and the law mandates the office to also respond to your request so that we all will know what the people we have appointed and elected to go and be in public office on our behalf. Whatever they are doing, they are doing it for us. So we have a right to know what they are doing. Democracy thrives on information. Mm. It is only when people have information, know what is happening, that they will participate in the process. Okay. So if we have a law that is going to facilitate access, greater access to information, it is in the greater good for, of, of Ghana. Certainly. So let me come to you, Esther. Uh, the Commonwealth uh, Human Rights Initiative has been a part of this for a very long time. Yes. And the last time I spoke to uh, Mina, I asked her, she, she, she actually felt exhausted. She felt tired. Okay. I, I, I mean, do you, do you get the sense sometimes that this whole uh, delay is supposed to make everybody exhausted so that at the end of the day, we lose hope and we lose the grip on it and we just let it go. Um, okay, um, thank you. But yes, I think so. Not so sure, but then 
considering the fact that you don't we don't get any tangible reasons why this process is dragging mm. it could be that what our leaders are thinking is that okay let's drag the process and in the long run they'll get tired and give up but trust me we are never going to give up which is what i was coming to in that case what then is the strategy for the coalition what is the coalition strategy to uh counter this so-called strategy you know hypothetically okay so the strategy is uh, again like what we are going to do tomorrow the idea is to get the general public involved right. because it is only when we hear everybody talking that is when our leaders will rise up to what is expected of them most uh, uh, usually i mean from the beginning of the advocacy when you engage them some of the things that they, i mean our leaders say that oh you don't even hear the people talking about it i don't think they are ready i don't think they want it so now we want to get the people on the street everybody talking about it for our leaders to know that yes we are ready so we are wearing our voice okay. that is what we are doing tomorrow we've been talking and we are not hearing so maybe if we were and this the way uh, i mean red is very out i mean mm. it's very colorful right. so maybe for with that one they will see since they are loud not hearing colors. us they will see it yes the, 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 you, you, do, you're doing loud colors instead <laughs> of loud voices we've okay. done the loud voices and they are not acting so we are doing loud, loud. colors. okay yes. What, how is tomorrow going to look like and what are you, if you have the, I mean, if you have the platform basically, so speak to people as to why, how they should join you tomorrow. What is it that you, you tell them? Both of you can have a go at it. Okay. Yeah, okay. For, so for tomorrow, like Elvis has said already, mm -hmm. Um, we are going out to certain locations mm -hmm. in Accra here. I do have it here. I can go through it for you if you want me to. Uh, the areas are Tema Station, uh, yeah. Tudu in Accra Central, the Accra Mall, the Imano Eye Clinic Traffic Light, Kwame Nkrumah Circle, Rage Roundabout, and then they will be distributing uh, the flyers in, in this area. So please exactly. go ahead. So basically, like you said, we are going to distribute flyers in these areas and also talk to people walking around mm. just to explain to them the benefits of the law and why they should also support the advocacy okay. and alongside as we are on the street some of the CSO, uh, CSO leaders will also go to parliament okay. just to sit at the gallery in red as well okay. just for the parliamentarian to see how serious we are wow. with this advocacy. Okay. Elvis, for you, how will tomorrow, tomorrow look like? You did mention that you had a letter from Parliament. How is the Parliament arrangement going? Oh, no, no. They have also agreed that yeah. we can go to Parliament. Because in the past, any time we go there, they say so long as you are coming there in a, in a group, mm -hmm. you need to write to them for them to be notified okay. that you are coming, for them to do whatever arrangement they So you've written to, to them? So now we have written to them, and we just received a response from them that, do you want to read for us to, what the response says? But what I want to add before we read that is okay. that we are asking every Ghanaian, yeah. wherever you are, even outside Ghana, tomorrow is Red Friday, wear red. And we are saying that from tomorrow till this bill is passed into law, okay. every Friday, every Ghanaian should wear red. We okay. are wearing red every Friday as a message to the lawmakers that until they pass the law, we're not going to rest. And wherever you are, once you wear your red, if you are somebody who is on social media, just take a picture, write RTI Friday, and post the picture there. Hashtag so we want R to dominate okay. all the media platforms from online, RTI, TV, radio, Red and Friday. newspaper, okay. whatever they, they, they want to get information. Something should hit them about RTI. That is what we want every member of this country, every Ghanaian to do, because the law is for everybody. The law, people have been mm, uh, miseducated that the law is for journalists to go and attack politicians. It is never true. The okay. law is for every Ghanaian to have access to information that will improve lives and everything that we want to do in this country. Okay, let's read what the, the letter says, uh, uh, the letter you got from Parliament. So we're talking about the RTI. Now, RTI, the RTI coalition wants you to wear red tomorrow. And then they're saying that if you do wear red, take a photo of it and put it on social media. The hashtag is RTI Red Friday. That's RTI Red R E D Friday. So that's R T I Friday. So for all of you selfie takers, you love to take to take selfie. This is a nice opportunity for you to flaunt those red dresses that you have and flaunt those red t shirts that you have. Put it on social media. Just add the hashtag R T I Red Friday. Yeah. The hope is that you will move the parliamentarians, the people you're paying to make laws for you, you will move them to pass this law. That gives you 
uh, makes it easier for you to seek and demand information from state institutions. So what does the letter from Parliament say? Okay, so the letter is addressed to one of our colleagues. Mm -hmm. And then, so I read. Okay. It's dated today, that's 29th um, November. Mm. So, dear Mr. Uh, Boifu, permission to observe parliamentary proceedings. That's the heading. Mm. Let us acknowledge receipt of your letter dated 23rd November, requesting to observe proceedings in the chamber on Friday 30th November at 10 a.m. Okay. I am happy to inform you that as citizens of Ghana, you are welcome to observe. observe proceedings of the House any time Parliament okay. sits in public. Okay. I must, however, remind you that clothing or anything that will constitute advertisement of any kind, which inscriptions are included, are prohibited in Parliament. Okay. As usual, have the assurance of my highest regard, Kate Ado, APR, Acting Director, Public Affairs, okay. and a copy to the Majority Leader and the Clerk. For parliament. So there's an interesting phrase there yes. about wearing a particular uniform that has inscription. You're not going to wear this tomorrow in parliament. Are I, you? I, I, that's the warning they are giving us for this particular. Anyway, it is there, but I disagree as an individual. And I always tell people that in life, if you don't challenge the status quo, things will not change. I don't see what a writing like pass the RTI bill, what kind of problem it can cause in parliament or for anybody to insist that. You cannot wear an attire with inscription in it into the house. Even though it's their law, I disagree with them. And I think that we need to change this, which they say it is part of their standing orders. They must change it because I don't see why I cannot wear an attire just reminding members but of parliament it's, that it's you can't, you can't, you, it, you, you don't just you have to do Don't you think it's basically to maintain the, the sanctity, if you like, of parliament so that people, otherwise anybody can wear something and say, for example, uh, insult the speaker and just write it. On the shed so they should say insulting, but a bill that has been in and out of the house for eight years, and somebody is reminding you to pass it, what is <laughs> insult about that? So, so you see, you, you cannot just pass one rule mm, to, to, to take over everything. At least there should be exception. Okay. This is a law that has been going through the house for eight years. Okay. And the yeah. parliament should be proactive in doing certain things, Very not well. RTI. RTI is not a crime. Very well. It is a human right. So how are you preventing me? Eh? You are preventing me from exercising my human rights okay. because it is a house of parliament. Well, the good thing is that now there won't be any arrest. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the last time they roughed oh, you up. It means when I wear this, I will still be arrested. The, the, exactly. the last time what? they roughed you up. A yes, bit. what it means that if I wear this, I will not be allowed to go. To, to, uh, make, your, make it your final <laughs> comment for me about how, what happened the last time. How you got arrested and how you got free. Well, I was arrested on the basis that I was trying to take a picture of a security officer who was breaking our. Uh, uh, Placards that were holding, standing by the roadside in front of a, a, a conference center. And their reason is that it is illegal for you to take a picture of a security officer on duty doing his job. And I said it is not true. What the person is doing, I don't think it's right. That's why I'm taking him a picture. They say because of that, I have flouted the rules. So they arrested me and took me to the parliament police station. How did they free you? Well, it took about 30 minutes after the commander of the station came and listened to what has transpired and he so said okay then of course yeah. it cannot be an arrest and therefore he's asking me to go but before then the one who sent me they actually indicated that he has arrested me if i when i told him that i needed my phone to call my employer that this is what has happened to me he said no if you're arrested you've lost your right so my phone actually was with the police it took oh. kojo yangshin and uh, mm -hmm. uh, daniel to come in and as part of the conversation he said you have not arrested a gentleman and he said you know, people have seized this phone so what showed that you are not arrested it was at that point that he ordered the, his, his people to bring me my phone. So there's several evidence that I was arrested. And I was the one the man told me I was arrested. So unfortunately, the officer in charge of the uh, parliament police turned the issue arrested. No, for him, looking at the circumstances, he doesn't think that what has happened should constitute an arrest. And I, I must add that I was even sitting there when another citizen was brought there on grounds that he took the police officers at parliament gate he took them uh, photos. So they arrested him too and brought him there with his phone. And the man actually sees his phone. The police officer who brought the gentleman there also sees his phone. So we're two actually sitting there. When we confronted the commander in his office and made him to understand that taking an officer on duty is not a crime. It was there that one of the policemen quickly took the guy's phone and went and gave it to him to leave. So I wasn't even the only person who was arrested for taking a picture. There were two. So you see, sometimes people use 
their own discretion, which is not even lawful, to do things because they think that the uniform they are wearing probably is their own money who bought, which bought it, but we bought it for them. So they should understand that they must work with the remit of the law, not, okay. not do things that they think they, have, they can do. Okay. It's wrong. We shouldn't okay. allow that. That's why we need RTI. You see, RTI. you could have requested, I want to know the statement that was written at the police station okay. so that I'll know that I was be, I've been arrested. Okay. So we must all fight for RTI. We must all fight for RTI. Esther, your final comment, you have any? Yes, oh, just a reminder, just call on everyone to come out tomorrow mm. in red. Anything in red, just put on red. Wear your voice. Let our leaders know that it's something which when it we are all in support of it. So we are calling on everyone tomorrow and every other Friday to come out in red. And also, as you come out in red, talk to your your MP, talk to your parliamentarian to ensure that we get the bill passed at least as a Christmas gift before we, we, they rise before for the rise. Christmas break. Well, do you Thank think you. is that it, do you do, do you think that is possible? Well, why well, don't you meet them tomorrow uh, on the street action? They will be in Parliament. They will be at the Chema Station in Tudu, Accra Central, at the Accra Mall. They will be there. Emmanuel Eye Clinic, Traffic Light. They will be there. Kwame Nkrumah Circle. They are there. Bridge Roundabout. Join them there. Also, you can join them on social media with the hashtag LTI Red Friday. You certainly must wear red. Elvis Dako is a member of the coalition for... Uh, Media Coalition for RTI. Elvis, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And Esther Ahulu is with the Commonwealth Human Rights Initiative. Esther, thank you so much for thank coming you. as well.